we will have a short moving forward uh, in this program as well. So all support to Shubha ma'am and all the entrepreneurs here as well. Okay, now we're going to get back to the regular program and hand it over to Gapsha for their workshop. Good afternoon, guys. Yes, you had lunch. Let's try it again. Good afternoon. My name is Malay. I represent Gapsha. Any of you know Gapsha? It's Malay. So, any of you know Gapsha? Nice, nice. So, uh, we uh, we are the lady chatbot platform. Any of you guys know chatbot? I guess most of you must be knowing it. So, uh, uh, he looks after our product. So, we'll be taking it to a journey of chatbots. So, handing over. Hi, guys. Uh, so before uh, we start off, I just want to get a raise of hand. How many of you have ever worked with chatbots or seen chatbots in your life? Or do you know you're talk talking to a chatbot? So this session will be more useful for people who have not heard about chatbots or just wondering what a chatbot is. So we are here to actually present something that we've been working on for the past couple of months and on what we think is the next stage of bot evolution and right? where bots are going to go. But before that, like, like I wanted to, I just want to set expectations of why bots is still relevant and why they're going to be huge uh, in the coming years, right? So, uh, like, we've seen, we know this, right? We know this uh, pattern that we've been seeing. Uh, we've always had these thick clients, we have worked on PCs, uh, heavy software all the time. Uh, back in the 80s and then in the 90s came the browser revolution, uh, thin clients, uh, and just basically software that's portable and easy and lightweight, right? A lot of API integrations and just making business easy. Uh, later we progressed to apps and the most logical thing is on apps on smartphones. Our devices changed, right? We came to smaller devices and we just started realizing that we can actually, with a few clicks, uh, get the job done. And so the use cases were still the same. The same use cases that you used to use on your clients, on your browsers, and now it's just transforming to apps. So essentially what's really happening is you are doing the same function but in a more easier way and slowly what happened was in the, in the app world messaging took over in the 2010s and the last 4-5 years, right? So we started seeing heavy usage of uh, messages and how people can actually just talk to their, their software, to their, their phone, right? So that's where messaging took over. And so now messaging was great, right? Because you can actually just tell the, tell the software what to do. So this was where the bot revolution actually took place. Um, we had SMS uh, and then we started moving to messaging in terms of WhatsApp, in terms of how Facebook Messenger started growing. Facebook Messenger in the last three years, as you guys have read, has done a lot for bots. Uh, that's because they already have a customer base. They already have a number of users who are active on the channel. They already had Messenger which really grew as a platform. What they just thought was, why don't businesses get to talk to their customers via Facebook Messenger, this is one channel, right? So they built, they built a whole uh, messaging layer, they built how we can actually talk to them in different ways, in terms of having catalogs, in terms of buttons and quick replies, ensuring that we can actually say the same things, but very simply and talk to the bot, right? So um, that's where we came to understand that bots the next big thing. And, uh, just so that people understand why bots are going to be the big thing, I'll give you a demonstration of how many companies that are actually getting invested into bots. And this is just a minuscule, small number of companies. Uh, probably we have them here because they were early movers in the bot space. Uh, but if you if you notice very closely, they are from all sorts of domains, right? Right from, from airlines to news to shopping and even messaging companies. They're all investing in bots simply because they see the use cases, they see the potential. Uh, Speaking of use cases and potential, these are just some of the use cases that we had up, uh, on our website where we have solutions for bots. But think of it, customer support is a typical use case, right? Uh, your bot that does repeated actions and the same same functions can answer questions to, for many people. Just in front of coming to your website, they find you on Facebook Messenger. Um, you are going to be asking questions about where, how do I log in and uh, what's the process for shipping and how do I find my 
uh, shipment or my order track, all those kinds of things. Those are just simple questions that bots can answer. So typically what customers do is they focus on one use case. They'll say, okay, let's build a bot. We were not sure whether we should invest in bots. And I've been talking to a bunch of you right now in the last couple of hours realizing everybody's thinking of bots. They, they kind of know, okay, it does something, but how can I really use it? How can I make my engagement uh, better? And how do I make money out of it, right, eventually? So typically they think of one use case, which is customer support or tracking an order, for example, and giving shipment updates. Uh, when it comes to the banking sector, it typically have your invoice uploaded, uh, have your uh, statement downloaded right from the bot. So you don't really need to have that message, uh, to have the app, or go to the website to do that. And we're not saying that apps are going to go away or websites are going to go away. It's just that the messaging platform is going to be a new avenue where people go to because they're already there on that. They're already all, all of you on message, they're already on WhatsApp. I mean, we don't know when WhatsApp is going to open the APIs, but right, we're already on those messaging platforms. It's just another avenue for, for to reach your customers and get engagement. Uh, even things like travel, we spoke to a couple of people on travel. Uh, they were saying that, you know, we, we like to build packages and we like to build holiday packages, uh, give flight information. So we're actually in that space. We're building, we're building bots for travel agents, we're building bots for bigger companies, enterprise companies who have a bunch of use cases that they want to venture into, but they start by step one, which is perform one use case and then so let's see whether where we reap the benefits, right? So, um, so let me take you through that, uh, through that stage of how we think of, of building a bot and what the bot strategy should be. Um, one company thinks of bots, okay, we build one use case, like I've been saying, on one channel, right? And so they see the engagement, they see that, okay, customers are coming, it's fulfilling its job, it's doing what it's meant for, now where do we go from here, okay? So they think, okay, instead of going to multiple use cases, why don't we try different channels? Because your customers are also there on different channels. So the different channels that I'm talking about are text. So text, within text, there's so many different channels right there, right? There's Facebook Messenger, there's Twitter, there's Slack. All these guys have a bot building platform. They already have a framework where you can build bots for. So, and, and there's many others. There's Line, there's Viber, there's Google Chat. So many avenues where your customers are already there. So they'll say, okay, why don't we deploy, why don't we deploy our bot on one of these channels? Then there's the advent of Google Home and Alexa, the voice bots. Okay, they are not really growing so much in India as, as expected, but probably they expect in the next year or so more of assistant bots and more skills like this Alexa skills will be on the Alexa uh, the device, and so more people are going to be start engaging with them and just asking the bot, right? What's my day look like? Uh, how's my commute? It's as good as just talking to the bot and getting the information. Uh, typically, what we've seen uh, with our customers is the website and the app, right? So they want their bots on their website with a little talk to me button, uh, a little widget that, talk, that says chat with us now and get a help. So that's a typical use case. But what they realize is there's so many other avenues that we can go into. Uh, so that's, that's where we are today and that's where we're seeing a lot of traction in the bot space. And what we've been doing is thinking a little further. Like, okay, so what's next? So what would happen is, think of some scenario where you're in an enterprise. Okay, you're a big company and you have you're, you're stationed in multiple countries, probably cross languages. What's the bot strategy for that, right? What would you need? So your information source is the same, the bot pulling logic from one side, right? So what would happen is you would have some internal bots to talk to. And when I say internal bots, there's something like you have one function here and you don't want to build the same function again here when it's in another company in some other, some other city or some other division that handles budgets differently, their tech is different. Those scenarios a lot, uh, they arise a lot. So what you do is you want to just connect your bot to their bot and basically build that communication. That requires a lot of coding and that requires a lot of integration. So that's, that's a problem statement right there, which probably the companies don't want to take themselves. Right? They say, okay, we may want to have multiple bots, but we don't want to build that tech, right? Uh, then so that's one problem statement. The other problem state statement is the external bots. So now when I say external bots, is like how you have integrations for your app, for your business, for payments, or for getting reports from an analytics tool, or even <coughs> probably getting some delivery confirmation from a logistics partner, right? So you are, all your businesses are integrated with different businesses. That's where your bot can probably talk to another system. 
So obviously you can, ob you can have your bots talk to an API and get the information. You don't really talk to another bot. But we'll come to that part where why it's important for bots to talk to different bots in a, in a second. Um, but but if you think of it, like these are probably where we'll be, we'll be going in the next couple of years or so. That's, that's the vision that we have that we're seeing in the bot landscape and a lot of other chatbot makers are thinking about how do we make this grow. And why this is interesting is because there's a potential of bots talking to other bots where apps and websites don't do that. I mean, yeah, we will obviously have a backend where Google can do some deep linking. I know this is a little technical sometimes, but just to give you an idea, it's a little hard to have apps talk to different apps and websites to gather information from different websites and even partnering up. But what would be the case, right? If we had Bosch talk to different bots, just handle it seamlessly, right? You guys don't have to do too much. Uh, for, for us to achieve this, right, what would you need? You probably need a bot building platform, right? So you need cross-channel APIs, you need someone to build these APIs across the channels, across the various text channels, across voice, uh, handling messaging across these, these uh, channels. Also between different bots, right? So you need a bot building platform. And what you need, a tool really that helps bot to bot communication. So that's what we've been thinking about and, and that's where we're really excited about how that space is going to evolve. But um, just to go ahead, like I spoke about, what about bot to bot, right? You can always have APIs do that. And some of you technical folks may, may agree with me, right? So bots, you can obviously talk to APIs, why do we need bot to bot? But bots are inherently fault tolerant. They don't really uh, fail unless your bot is designed that way. And that's where we come into bot design. If your bots are designed to handle responses and failures well, any request that comes to your bot can be handled saying, I can process it later, or I can hand it off to another bot, or I can come back to you at a different time, or I don't know the answer. That, can, that APIs can't handle those kind of situations. APIs usually fail. This is a request and response. So they are usually unidirectional, while bots are bidirectional. Um, and they're not fault tolerant. And the most important thing I'd like to highlight is bots can actually talk to humans and other bots alike. They have that potential where APIs don't, right? People don't understand what APIs are and bots. I mean, basically, they, they think that why don't I just get an answer in English? It's all that matters to me, right? So now, like, now that you guys have started thinking about bot, bot communication, uh, what can they really do in, in a very high level, right? So bots can actually collaborate with each other. They can delegate information. They can negotiate. Some things that we, that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, right, as humans. We actually do all of this and probably more, right? We obviously better ourselves by adding more skills to us ourselves. We collaborate. We negotiate. Uh, and, and we see that bots can do this in the future, right? We're already thinking that why don't we have... We already see use cases in our, in our company and from our clients that, hey, but I have a bot with this company. I want to talk to them, can we do that? And so we've been thinking about what, how do we handle this problem? How do we, uh, what can we do? So it was just a couple of months ago where we started building this, uh, this channel called the Interbot. So, and what we have right now is the Interbot channel, which is a messaging channel, right, okay? The messaging channel really is as simple as an underlying layer where bots can talk to different bots. Um, and so this channel, you can, you can come and publish your bot uh, built on any other platform and it will just work and it will talk to your other bots on different platforms. Um, just to highlight what the Interbot channel does it. So what we'll be doing is, after this we'll be giving some demos as to really how the channel works, who, who, are, who are our key audiences and what are the use cases really. And we'll show you some use cases. But really bot makers can publish their bots on different platforms and just putting it up on the channel. Then will help them think about, okay, I don't need to build that functionality. I can just hand it off to another person who can do it for me. Um, business, you don't have to focus on and on the tech, on understanding how, okay, how this integration works. And we see that typically as the main challenges. So business can just focus on their business and their tech and just hand it over to another bot that does the work for them. Collectively, what happens over time is you have an ecosystem of bots. Right? You have an ecosystem of bots that are talking to each other and constantly upgrading themselves. So now you have a bot that already does this functionality that can be reused by any other business. So that becomes the business by itself. Like building libraries for different companies. That's all we do. We don't really focus on the humans part, we focus on the bot, the bot part. 
So just to take you through some really hard, uh, low-level use cases, uh, Interbot marketplaces. So we've been thinking of this, right? How would I have a bot that talks to an Amazon bot, talks to uh, my Flipkart bot and Snapdeal bot? I send it requests and it tells me what's the best price for uh, the iPhone 7, right? So it tells me it's available or not. It tells me whether what the price is. It can even negotiate with me, right? So or for me, sorry. It can tell me whether it's the right time to buy and the right time to uh, is it trending and those kind of information that can all come from different bots. I just need to connect that bot to the different connectors that are out there and the channel allows that. So that's one use case. And then the multiplayer game. That's very interesting out to us because uh, we just tried an example um, back in the office that what if we deployed multiple blackjack strategies with the dealer bot, right? So you have Pati Pati for that matter. You have a bot that's a dealer and then we can play games with the dealer, right? So I can have an aggressive strategy, I can have a very passive strategy, I don't want to play, I don't bet too hard, I can bet blind. And so we're trying these different experiments right in the, in the office, right? How can, how can this work? And the games get over in seconds, but that's the fun of it. You try different strategies and you know your results. So this can grow into a community of, of bots where they're talking to each other, they're actually playing games and doing various amount of functionality. So there's a lot of potential in how we can connect bots and, and, and see the collective greatness of what can happen from there. Uh, the next example is things like managers, interbot managers. And in simple terms, they're basically bots that verify information, right? So if it's another system up or, up or down, or if there's, a, if there's some sort of malicious activity that's going on or not, security, there's so many things that can be done just by having simple bots that perform just one function and they can just interact with that bot and get back information. As simple as that. It doesn't have to be complex, but what happens is you get a complex architecture and then you get really great benefits out of this. Uh, the next one is redirecting requests. So um, this is one of our, our favorite use cases and we've been actually working with some clients on this, which is building a brand bot. Like I told you earlier, right? There's one company that's in the US, but they have subsidiaries in Spain, they have subsidiaries in Brazil. Uh, the subsidiaries do different work and they want bots for themselves. Both, both companies in the US and the subsidiaries have bots that are customer facing, not internal. So now the company has a dilemma, right? Okay, I, should I have multiple bots on Facebook Messenger or my website? What really happens? So there's multiple widgets uh, or I should publish my bot multiple times. So then the customers get confused, right? Who's the bot? Which is the one I'm talking to? That's where we, we said, okay, that's where you go use Interbot. You can just have one cu customer facing bot, there's no confusion, it's your brand bot. Internally, what happens is you route requests according to what the request of the customer is. And that's where your bot that you, that you build as a front facing bot has the intelligence, probably has NLP capabilities, a little AI that it can understand request and process it that way. So it's how you build your bot and how what tech you use with it that can actually complement the whole bot to bot communication. Um, and so like, like I said, you can hand off translation. So the Brazilian team wanted it in their language. The Spanish team wanted the bot to respond in their language. So what we did, we took a translator bot. We just put it in between these two bots. So any request that comes in Spanish gets requested to the translator bot. It translates it back in English, gives it to the main bot, okay. I understood what your request is here, the answer back in English, back to Spanish translation, back to the user. Now this may seem like futuristic sci-fi, but this is actually there. We actually have bots talking to other bots and you guys may not even know it. Like, you know, it's translated the whole information and you think you're talking to a Spanish bot. So that's, that's where the magic is and we'll show you some demos of how this actually works. Uh, our next example is about collective capabilities, right? So. If you think in IoT space, there are a lot of sensor networks and there's a lot of communication between uh, networks in, in terms of how information is, is gathered up and collected. So aggregated information. There can be a bunch of bots in this building, for example, or in a colony that actually send out activity information that tells you a status of security for that matter. And this collective information goes up to a certain bot that actually sends out reports. So there's different functionalities all collectively sent up uh, to, the, to, the, to the central bot. There's a formation. And if you see, all these are different formations on how bots can be grouped. It's essentially how the network is connected and the bots making their own use cases out of, these, out of this mesh of networks. Um, 
the next one is the the whole new set of boards I was talking about. This is this is really exciting, and so we have a big developer community that actually that actually on a very daily basis act, actively talks to us about how to build bots and the building platforms and they talk to us about building niche bots. Like there's one person developer who's independently building uh, a verifier bot. What that does is like the VeriSign or the trustees of the world, it just verifies whether the person is valid or not or giving you authentication, right? So anytime you need verification of some information, you hand off to that bot, right? Uh, like I give you examples on transfer bots. It's just these guys will build translator bots for other bots and not humans. So their focus is on translation. Anybody can use it. So the advantage of having this channel is having the bots also listed on our interbot channel. So what we're, what we're building also, which I'll show in a minute, is the bot directory. The bot directory is where we're going to have all our bots, all the partner bots who want to publish their bots on the directory for anybody to consume. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so just reiterating all the scenarios that we talked about, uh, some may seem futuristic, some may seem, okay, this seems uh, too off for me, but what we are here to tell you is there's a there's scope, right? And there's potential of this happening. Eventually apps and websites and all businesses will want to talk to each other. There will be that need. And when you and when you think of that, it makes sense, right? So like it says, like, last evening I was showing this to my wife and she said, really, the Uber bot talks to your Starbucks bot, Really, that this seems very futuristic and doesn't make sense, but it can be done. So it's just some of the use cases that we thought we'll we'll highlight um, to you. Um, I just want to go over Interbot in principle very quickly. I don't want to bore you with all the literature about how it works and all those things. But principally, Interbot is nothing but consuming information and publishing information to a channel. Right? It's an open channel. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't enforce any standards, doesn't enforce too many rules uh, and we're actually contemplating how do we, we, do we keep it open, do we keep it uh, structured in certain ways so that some kind of information but we're actually working with different partners so we're learning ourselves as to how this channel needs to be, needs to be prolonged and, and, and how, what security data we input but essentially anybody can publish uh, information to the channel and anybody can consume information. Right? So we have basically string and text that, talk, that bots talk to each other in. And if for the technical folks, it's stringified JSON. But that's all that is to it. Um, and you can, you can come and make your bot uh, using any platform. I, mean, I want to enforce that because people may think, uh, do we need to use the Gupshap platform to build bots? No. The Gupshap platform just makes it easy to get the bot on the Interbot platform with one click. But essentially, you can build your bot on any other platform independently and come to our channel to consume the services of different bots and try it out yourself, right? Um, what I'd like to focus on is the, co the composing of bots. And what bot composition really means is uh, stringing bots together. So I have, like I said, I have a pizza bot and I want translation. So I just pick my pizza bot, add a translator to it and add it, so sorry, add the English to Spanish translator and then add a Spanish to English translator and back. So that's all there is to it on the Interbot channel. You can just compose your bot within 30 seconds with a syntax like this. That's it. The new bot has been created with your multiple bots. And how we'd like to think about it is, is like putting Lego pieces together. Literally as simple as that. Um, we have an example with some of Microsoft's cognitive services. Uh, and these are some AI applications that Microsoft has. And they've opened these APIs in terms of bots to us. So that was the idea, right? So we said, don't give us the APIs, give us bots. When they built these individual bots, we could just connect them and play around. So what we did was we took, we tried to get a sentiment bot of certain news. So there was a bot called Bing News, which actually gave news about any topic that we asked it individually. Then what we did was we took the sentiment bot, we passed that news to the sentiment bot, and told me if the story is positive, negative, or neutral. Uh, there's obviously scores that come in with the bot, but we're actually just keeping it simple to tell us whether it's neutral or positive or what. Right there, I just created a sentiment bot that tells me, like if I want to find out about information about uh, positive stories, which a lot of news and media houses use, we can just use this about, tell me stories positive or negative. Uh, and they have their own AI and, and an NLP that actually processes information and makes sense out of it. 
So there are a lot of bots that are actually out there that perform some functions that are very niche and focused. We're, we're all this time we're not able to potentially tap into how these can work with us and what we're doing is we're actually building this channel that actually will help you do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some demos so you guys understand how this is really functions and um, I guess then you get a better idea of really what's happening. So we're going to, you know, you guys may have a lot of questions. I'm going to hold off on the questions till we finish our demos, just so that then we can collectively get all the questions uh, one by one. year or so, more of assistant bots and more skills, like this Alexa skills, will be on the Alexa uh, the device. And so more people are going to be start engaging with them and just asking the bot, right, what's my day look like? Uh, how's my commute? It's as good as just talking to the bot and getting the information. Uh, typically what we've seen uh, with our customers is the website and the app, right? So they want their bots on their website with a little talk to me button. Uh, a little widget that, talk, that says chat with us now and carry help. So that's a typical use case. But what they realize is there's so many other avenues that we can go into. Uh, so that's, that's where we are today and that's where we're seeing a lot of traction in the bot space. And what we've been doing is thinking a little further. Like, okay, so what's next? So what would happen is, think of some scenario where you're in an enterprise. Okay, you're a big company and you have, you're, you're stationed in multiple countries, probably cross languages. What's the bot strategy for that, right? What would you need? So your information source is the same, the bot pulling logic from one side, right? So what would happen is you would have some internal bots to talk to. And when I say internal bots, there's something like you have one function here and you don't want to build the same function again here when it's in another company in some other, some other city or some other division that handles budgets differently, their tech is different. Those scenarios a lot, uh, they arise a lot. So what you do is you want to just connect your bot, their bot, and basically build that communication. That requires a lot of coding and that requires a lot of integration. So that's that's a problem statement right there, which probably the companies don't want to take themselves. Right? They say, okay, we may want to have multiple bots, but we don't want to build that tech, right? Uh, then so that's one problem statement. The other problem statement is the external bots. So now when I say external bots, is like how you have integrations for your app, for your business, for payments or for getting reports from an analytics tool, or even <coughs> probably getting some delivery confirmation from a logistics partner, right? So your, all your businesses are integrated with different businesses. So that's where your bot can probably talk to another system. So obviously you can, you can have your bots talk to an API and get the information. You don't really need to talk to another bot. But we'll come to that part where why it's important for bots to talk to different bots in a, in a second. Um, but but if you think of it, like these are probably where we'll be, we'll be going the next couple of years or so. That's, that's the vision that we have, that we're seeing in the bot landscape and a lot of other chatbot makers are thinking about how do we make this grow. And why this is interesting is because there's a potential of bots talking to other bots where apps and websites don't do that. I mean, yeah, we will obviously have a backend where Google can do some deep linking. I know this is a little technical sometimes, but just to give you an idea, it's a little hard to have apps talk to different apps and websites to gather information from different websites and even partnering up. But w what would be the case, right? If we had Bosch talk to different bots, it is handled it seamlessly, right? You guys don't have to do too much. Uh, for, for us to achieve this, right, what would you need? You probably need a bot building platform, right? So you need cross-channel APIs, you need someone to build these APIs across the channels, across the various text channels, across voice, uh, handling messaging across these these uh, channels. Also between different bots, right? So you need a bot building platform. And what you need a tool really that helps bot to bot communication. So that's what we've been thinking about and, and that's where we're really excited about how that space is going to evolve. But um, 
just to go ahead, like I spoke about, what about bot to bot, right? You can always have APIs do that. And some of you technical folks may, may agree with me, right? So bots, you can obviously talk to APIs, why do we need bot to bot? But bots are inherently fault tolerant. They don't really uh, fail unless your bot is designed that way. And that's where we come into bot design. If your bots are designed to handle responses and failures well, any request that comes to your bot can be handled saying, I can process it later, or I can hand it off to another bot, or I can come back to you at a different time, or I don't know the answer. That, can, that APIs can't handle those kind of situations. APIs usually fail. This is a request and response. So they are usually unidirectional, while bots are bidirectional. Um, and they're not fault tolerant. And the most important thing I'd like to highlight is bots can actually talk to humans and other bots alike. They have their potential. Where APIs don't, right? People don't understand what APIs are and bots. I mean, basically, they, they think that why don't I just get an answer in English? It's all that matters to me. Right? So now, now that you guys have started thinking about bot, bot communication, uh, what can they really do in, in, in a very high level, right? So bots can actually collaborate with each other. They can delegate information. They can negotiate. Some things that we, that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, right, as humans. We actually do all of this and probably more, right? We obviously better ourselves by adding more skills to us ourselves. We collaborate, we negotiate. Um, and, and we see that bots can do this in the future, right? We're already thinking that, why don't we have, we already see use cases in our, in our company and from our clients that, hey, but I have a bot with this company. I want to talk to them, can we do that? And so we've been thinking about what, how do we handle this problem? How do we, uh, what can we do? So it was just a couple of months ago where we started building this, uh, this channel called the Interbot. So, and what we have right now is the Interbot channel, which is a messaging channel, right, okay? The messaging channel really is as simple as an underlying layer where bots can talk to different bots. Um, and so this channel, you can, you can come and publish your bot uh, built on any other platform and it will just work and it will talk to your other bots on different platforms. Um, just to highlight what the Interbot channel does. And so what we'll be doing is, after this we'll be giving some demos as to really how the channel works, who, who, are, who are our key audiences, and what are the use cases really, and we'll show you some use cases. But really bot makers can publish their bots on different platforms and just putting it up on the channel. That will help them think about, okay, I don't need to build that functionality. I can just hand it off to another person who can do it for me. Um, businesses don't have to focus on, and on the tech, on understanding okay, how this integration works. And we see that typically as the main challenges. So business can just focus on their business and their tech and just hand it over to another bot that does the work for them. Collectively, what happens over time is you have an ecosystem of bots. Right? You have an ecosystem of bots that are talking to each other and constantly upgrading themselves. So now you have a bot that already does this functionality that can be reused by any other business. So that becomes the business by itself, like building libraries for different companies. That's all we do. We don't really focus on the humans part. We focus on the bot, the bot part. So just to take you through some really hard, uh, low-level use cases, uh, interbot marketplaces. So we've been thinking of this, right? How would I have a bot that talks to an Amazon bot? talks to uh, my Flipkart bot and Snapdeal bot. I send it requests and it tells me what's the best price for uh, the iPhone 7, right? So it tells me it's available or not. It tells me whether what the price is. It can even negotiate with me, right? So, or for me, sorry. It can tell me whether it's the right time to buy, and it's the right time to, uh, is it trending? And those kind of information that can all come from different bots. I just need to connect that bot to the different connectors that are out there. And the channel allows that. So that's one you see. And then the multiplayer games. That's very interesting out to us because uh, we just tried an example um, back in the office that what if we deployed multiple blackjack strategies with the dealer bot, right? So you have Pati Pati for that matter. You have a bot that's a dealer. And then you can play games with the dealer, right? So I can have an aggressive strategy. I can have a very passive strategy. I don't want to play, I don't bet too hard. I can bet blind. And so we're trying these different experiments right in the, in the office, right? how, can, how can this work? And the games get over in seconds, but that's the fun of it. You try different strategies and you know your results. So this can grow into a community of, of bots where they're talking to each other, they're actually playing games and doing various amount of functionality. So there's a lot of potential in how we can connect bots and, and, and 
see the collective greatness of what can happen from there. Uh, the next example is things like managers, interbot managers. And in simple terms, they're basically bots that verify information, right? So if there's another system up or, up or down, or if there's, a, if there's some sort of malicious activity that's going on or not, security, there's so many things that can be done just by having simple bots that perform just one function, and they can just interact with that bot and get back information, as simple as that. It doesn't have to be complex, but what happens is you get a complex architecture and then you get really great benefits out of this. Uh, the next one is redirecting requests. So um, this is one of our, our favorite use cases and we've been actually working with some clients on this, which is building a brand bot. Like I told you earlier, right? There's one company that's in the US, but they have subsidiaries in Spain, they have subsidiaries in Brazil. Um, the subsidiaries do different work and they want bots for themselves. Both, both companies in the US and the subsidiaries have bots that are customer facing, not internal. So now the company has a dilemma, right? Okay, I, should I have multiple bots on Facebook Messenger or my website? What really happens? So there's multiple widgets uh, or I should publish my bot multiple times. So then the customers get confused, right? Who's the bot? Which is the one I'm talking to? That's where we, we said, okay, that's where you, go, you use Interbot. You can just have one cu customer facing bot. There's no confusion. It's your brand bot. Internally, what happens is you route requests according to what the request of the customer is. And that's where your bot that you, that you build as a front-facing bot has the intelligence, probably has NLP capabilities, a little AI, that it can understand request and process it that way. So it's how you build your bot and how, what tech you use with it that can actually complement the whole bot to bot communication. Um, and so like, like I said, you can hand off translation. So the Brazilian team wanted it in their language. The Spanish team wanted the bot to respond in their language. So what we did, we took a translator bot. We just put it in between these two bots. So any request that comes in Spanish gets requested to the translator bot. It translates it back in English, gives it to the main bot. Okay, I understood what your request is. Here's the answer back in English, back to Spanish translation, back to the user. Now this may seem like futuristic sci-fi, but this is actually there. We actually have bots talking to other bots and you guys may not even know it. Like, you know, it's translated the whole information and you think you're talking to a Spanish bot. So that's, that's where the magic is and we'll show you some demos of how this actually works. Uh, our next example is about collective capabilities, right? So if, if you think in IoT space, there are a lot of sensor networks and there's a lot of communication between uh, networks in, in terms of how information is, is gathered up and collected. So aggregated information. There can be a bunch of bots in this building, for example, or in a colony that actually send out activity information that tells you a status of security for that matter. And this collective information goes up to a certain board that actually sends out reports. So there's different functionalities all collectively sent up uh, to, the, to, the, to the central board. There's a formation. And if you, if you see, all these are different formations on, on how bots can be grouped. It's essentially how the network is connected and the bots making their own use cases out of these, out of this mesh of network. Um, the next one is the, the whole new set of bots I was talking about. This is, this is really exciting and so we have a big developer community that actually, that actually on a very daily basis act, actively talks to us about how to build bots and the building platforms and they talk to us about building niche bots. Like there's one person, developer, who's independently building uh, a verifier bot. What that does is, like the VeriSign or the trustees of the world, it just verifies whether the person is valid or not, or giving you authentication, right? So anytime you need verification of some information, you hand off to that bot, right? Uh, like I'll give you examples on translator bots. It's just, these guys will build translator bots for other bots and not humans. So their focus is on translation. Anybody can use it. So the advantage of having this channel is having the bots also listed on our Interbot channel. So what we're, what we're building also, which I'll show you in a minute, is the bot directory. The bot directory is where we're going to have all our bots, all the partner bots who want to publish their bots on the directories for anybody to consume. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so just reiterating all the scenarios that we talked about, uh, some may seem futuristic, some may seem, okay, this seems uh, too off for me, but what we're here to tell you is there's a there's scope, right? And there's potential of this happening. Eventually, apps and websites and all businesses who want to talk to each other, there will be that need. And when you, and when you think of that, 
it makes sense, right? So, like it says, like the last evening I was showing this to my wife and she said, really, the Uber bot talks to your Starbucks bot, really that this seems very futuristic and doesn't make sense, but it can be done. So, it's just some of the use cases that we thought we'll, we'll highlight um, to you. Um, I just want to go over Interbot in principle very quickly. I don't want to bore you with all the literature about how it works and all this thing, but principally, Interbot is nothing but consuming information and publishing information to a channel, right? It's an open channel. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't enforce any standards, doesn't enforce too many rules. Uh, and we're actually contemplating how do we, we, do we keep it open, do we keep it uh, structured in certain ways so that some kind of information, but we're actually working with different partners. So we're learning ourselves as to how this channel needs to be, needs to be prolonged and, and, and how, what security data we need to put. But essentially, anybody can publish uh, information to the channel and anybody can consume information, right? So we have basically string and text that, talk, that bots talk to each other in. And if for the technical folks, is stringified JSON. But that's all that is to it. Um, and you can, you can come and make your bot uh, using any platform. I, mean, I want to enforce that because people may think, uh, do we need to use the Gupsha platform to build bots? No. The Gupsha platform just makes it easy to get the bot on the Interbot platform with one click. But essentially, you can build your bot on any other platform independently and come to our channel to consume the services of different bots and try it out yourself, right? Um, what I'd like to focus on is the, co the composing of bots. And what bot composition really means is uh, stringing bots together. So I have, like I said, I have a pizza bot and I want translation. So I just take my pizza bot, add a translator to it, and add it. So sorry, add the English to Spanish translator, and then add a Spanish to English translator, and back. So that's all there is to it on the Interbot channel. You can just compose your bot within 30 seconds with a syntax like this. That's it. The new bot has been created with your multiple bots. And how we'd like to think about it is is like putting Lego pieces together. Literally as simple as that. Um, we have an example with some of Microsoft's cognitive services. Uh, and these are some AI applications that Microsoft has. And they've opened these APIs in terms of bots to us. So that was the idea, right? So we said, don't give us the APIs, give us bots. When they built these individual bots, we could just connect them and play around. So what we did was we took we tried to get a sentiment bot of certain news. So there was a bot called Bing News, which actually gave news about any topic that we asked it individually. Then what we did was we took the sentiment bot, we passed that news to the sentiment bot, and told me the story is positive, negative, or neutral. Uh, there's obviously scores that come in with the bot, but we're actually just keeping it simple to tell us whether it's neutral or positive or what. Right there, I just created a sentiment bot that tells me like if I want to find out about information about positive stories, which a lot of news and media houses use, we can just use this about, tell me stories positive or negative. Uh, and they have their own AI and, and an NLP that actually process the information and makes sense out of it. So there are a lot of bots that actually, that perform some functions that are very niche and focused. We're, we're, all this time we're not able to potentially tap into how these can work with us and what we're doing is we're actually building this channel that actually will help you do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some demos so you guys understand how this really functions and um, I guess then you get a better idea of really what's happening. So we're going to, you know, you guys may have a lot of questions. I'm going to hold off on the questions till we finish our demos, just so that then we can collectively get all the questions uh, one by one. The website is actually interbot.cc. Uh, this is still in beta because we're still evaluating how the how the product is going to evolve before we even release it officially to the customer. We're already building a lot of software actually on this. And when you go to this, uh, we're hoping it's self-serve. 
which is there are a lot of videos that tell you about how to build bots. Uh, the same information that I've given you, uh, you can read it there. And uh, what you can do is you can understand how the bot directory works. But I'll take you through that very quickly. Before that, um, let me take you through a demo. So, this is the consume section. And we have the separate sections because you can understand intentionally why this section really talks about consuming information and how a bot can actually work with different bots. And we'll show you the magic right here. Um, let me take you through a lottery demo. And so, like it says, this is a demo of a, of a bot that plays with multiple bots. Okay? There's a dealer bot that actually says, pick some numbers, and then the dealer picks a number, and the number that's closest wins. It's a very simple use case, but what you can do is, you just type start, right? And I'm hoping the net fine. So the magic happens right here. If you can see, the game dealer bot talks to play bot 1, play bot 2, play bot 3. These are three individual bots that were built behind this, right? So one bot is talking to three different bots, telling it to start the game. The three different bots acknowledge that. Obviously, the messages are synchronous or asynchronous, so they can get lost in between or mismanaged. But they all are replying with an acknowledgement, and all of them have given a number back to the game dealer. Alright? So the game dealer tells your IPC bot, okay, uh, I've got the numbers. Now, I just say draw. When I say draw, this is where the lucky draw starts, right? So it's picking up the numbers, right? So this is where it tells the other bots, you lost or you won. Because the number that's closest to the dealer's pick actually wins. So this is a very simple use case as to how bots can talk to different bots and I mean anybody can think of more games that they can build and more complex strategies uh, how bots can talk to different bots. Um, another, another use case is um, just fetching information about from different merchants about what the price of the iPhone is. So I can just say, uh, like, what's the what's the price of an iPhone? Or iPhone 7. So this bot that we have built it has a little of keyword matching and NLP, but it understands what's happening in terms of uh, what the request is. Like is it iPhone, iPhone 6, iPhone 7? And if you notice, there's three bots. There's a shop three bot, there's a shop one bot and shop two bot, right? The requests have gone to these three bots. They come back with the different prices for different bots. And obviously these numbers are hard coded for demo purposes. But this is actually a use case that anybody can deploy and start understanding, okay, get more engagement on their bot, right? Uh, users are coming to two shop comparisons. Um, there are apps that do that, why not bots? Uh, shopping bot. This is uh, this has a little bit of NLP in it, and I'll show you how. Uh, let's say, add jeans and shoes to my cart. So I've just asked this bot to add jeans and shoes to my cart. What I want to demonstrate here is it, the bot first sends the request to an intent bot. In the NLP world, um, I don't want to go too much deep into NLP right now, but there's an understanding the intent of what the user wants to do. The intent here is to buy. So as you can see, it, it identified that user wants to buy, and that's the query. And then we send it to an entity bot. An entity bot is nothing but to understand what he wants to buy. What are the entities in the question? And then the entities that it picked out was jeans and shoes. right? So, and then obviously it picked out card because the NLP is not, not yet got that things card is another item too. But jeans, shoes are added to your card. So if you understand this, it really is, tomorrow we can build an intent bot, an NLP bot, and you just, you just have to call it, and you have NLP capabilities in your bot. You guys don't have to build it yourselves, you don't have to think about what NLP strategy, who do we hire, what, uh, what's the AI looking like. Hand it off to an NLP bot, an intent bot, or any complex workflows like IBM Watson, and Google's, uh, in, in, in Google's uh, TensorFlow bot. There are a lot of bots out there that can actually process your request and give it back to us. But there's no channel, and that's where we come in, right? We build the channel for communication between different bots. Um, again, the brand bot. Okay? So there's three brands or sub products for a certain company. Um, they are brand A, brand B, brand C. So I can just say, and, 
and this demo is really tells you whether a product of brand A of, of B and C is available and what's the price. Right? So I can just type what's the price of product A. Right? So from this query, it understood that it needs to go to brand A, the board that's brand A. And brand A has the price of the product as 10. So different companies can have different pricing and that pricing is stored with that board itself. You just have to query it and serve it to your customer. You don't have to have the information. Uh, then I can say is product C available, right? Because this bot tells you about the price and the availability of a certain product. So what happens is it understands this product C and it goes to brand C and says brand C is available. So that's all there is to it. Simple use cases but very powerful in terms of how businesses can grow with this information. Yeah, I can take care of spelling mistakes also. I mean, it depends on how your NLP bot is capable. So the question here is, can it take care of spelling mistakes? And that's where we go into AI and NLP, how it can process words. Uh, sometimes NLP will obviously fail, right? Because it's trying to understand the spelling, and the spelling may match with another word, and it fail. But that's the improvements in the NLP space that needs to be done. And again, you, you, what bot you pick in terms of the NLP space will, will help you achieve better NLP processing, right? So it all depends on that. The channel will really help you connect your bot to the NLP. That's all it is. Um, yeah, and so in this consume section, we have a lot of other bots that are individual bots. So what I just showed you are bots that are composite bots, that are bots talking to individual ones. But you also see need those individual ones that you can connect to. So we have a list of those individual bots right here. There's a weather bot, there's a time check bot, and these are utility. So for example, think of you as a travel bot, but you don't you want to give the time in another country, you want to know what's the weather in another country, you want to know uh, uh, so sort of is there any flights to another country, but you build holiday packages. You don't have to have that logic to figure out have an API to build the time, right? To tell you what the currency is in another country. There are these individual bots that you do it with. You just have to connect them. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was bot composition. So let me just take you to the Interbot console. And what we'll do is we'll build the same thing I showed you. I showed the sentiment bot. Okay? Um, so the syntax is exactly how I showed you, right? It's, and it's something that's already here. Things like this. So what we'll do is we'll build a bot right now. So I'll say die sentiment news. Okay, just some name equal to at the rate big news. Hi, at the rate sentiment. just created and it will show up right here on top there you have Thai sentiment news so I can just ask anything anything to do with news right so I can just say for example Donald Trump right so if you see what's happening here your bot the IBC initiated bot is a bot for every account so but what happens is it, it gives it to the big news, gives it to the big news, big news returns news, right, for the for, for Donald Trump. And that's what the, that bot does. It's not that bot something that we can do. It's the big news that's doing that. Then it's giving it to the sentiment analysis. The sentiment analysis says the story is positive. And there you have uh, a news article about, about Donald Trump that says it's positive. What if I say, for example, Lincoln Park, right? Yeah, okay. 
I don't know. So this is something that we're trying on the fly, obviously. Right. So as a lead singer passed away, the story is negative. So that's kind of a sentiment, right? It, analyz it analyzes what the news is and gives you a, a sentiment of um, what that bot is. So we have multiple different bots that you can build and I can show you another example, right? So that, like you see here, it says country capital and Bing image. What that does is first it will give you the country capital of you, whatever query you ask and then it will give you an image of the capital. So right here I'll, have it. So, I'll say Germany, let's see. Right, it gave you an image of, I guess, Berlin. So I can show that to you in a second. Right, see? Um, the country capital is Berlin. And in Bing, can you give me an image of uh, Berlin that you have in your records? And there you have it. So um, we've just been going over some simple use cases, right? But we just want to show you what the potential of the Interbot channel is and, and how you can leverage it. Uh, and we're obviously talking to everybody about what their thoughts are and, and what and pushing us to build the channel a certain way. Uh, I mean, that's to do with the demos, but we get a lot of questions about, okay, can anybody really build a board? What do I, what rules do I have to follow? How difficult is it? And that's why we're here to help actually. Uh, we understand the space is new and it's, and we're thinking it's very similar to how the internet started. And that's why we've named it Interbot, really, because it's a network of bots and it's not easy to start up. And obviously when the internet started, everybody was confused, right? How do we make connections? How do we make calls? How will it want to work? But that's where the vision got mature over time. Uh, and that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping that a lot of businesses come on board and they understand the potential of this channel. Uh, the channel will obviously grow, become uh, very, very strong. Uh, there's a lot of, there's still, that's why we're still in beta. We're still in, 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 in the process of experimenting and open to ideas uh, and keeping the channel open with no standards. So we're hoping that you guys see the potential. Um, think of, after you go back home, think about, okay, there's something I learned, something about this today, um, how we can leverage it and, and talk to us about it. And I think that's all we have, right? Thank you, guys. All right. So uh, I just want to open it to questions. Thank you, guys. Any questions you guys have? Yeah. Most uh, there are many companies who are into this technology. Since you are, there are many other companies also who are in this technology space. Correct. Now, uh, have you, can't you guys sit down together and decide on certain standards? Right. Because you know, creating a bot is the easiest part. Putting in the intelligence, putting in the NLP part, and, right. and it's not a one-shot job. You got to yeah. keep improving it. So, are you guys planning to have some kind of a uh, industry-wide standard? So, for instance, intents. You know, right. how do you define what are the standard intents which are there in business uh, use cases? Right. So, actually, that's a good question because what we're doing uh, on the NLP, like you asked, the intents part, right? Uh, we're actually building vertical uh, specialized bots. With, with actually NLP, so we're big, building it for the banking domain, right? And so when I say banking domain, the typical questions in the banking domain are: I want to inquire for an inquiry about my statement. I have a transaction to process. I can't see my uh, my purchase from last week. I want a refund. All those typical questions that are asked in the banking domain, we're building a sort of a bot that actually can be deployed at any given time to any client. Similarly, in the travel space, we're building. Bookings, bookings for tickets, um, travel to certain destinations, uh, refund statuses, and for the typical uh, questions that we get from all our clients. So the, the clients actually give us the domain knowledge. They tell us, okay, these are the typical questions we always get. These are 10% of those, but the rest of the queries should focus on this, and the bot should do a good job of answering those questions. My question was, you and let's say Google and let's say Microsoft yeah. and other companies who are serious players in this space get together and define certain standards. So I'm not talking about the domain expertise in verticals. Correct. So we're not into yet to defining any standard. So that would actually come as a limitation. Because when you define any standard, what happens is then we're forcing people to follow certain rules. And right now the board space is still evolving. There's a lot of new work that can be done, a lot of new kind of use cases. And uh, even in the terms of how we talk to bots, 
it's all interface or it can be by speech. So there's so many avenues that are actually being explored right now. There's no standardization across the board. And we think that would be a, a bad idea at least right now. Right now we're open to just putting new bots, solving problems, right? Anybody else? So we're going to be hanging back here. Uh, and you guys can come and talk to us about any questions you guys have, right? Thank you guys.